Hey, good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to Naked Conversations, part one, uh, for a world that works. And here's kind of my inspiration for this. Well, my inspiration for the title came from a book uh, called Naked Conversations. That was the title of the book. That is the title of the book. It's an excellent book by Robert Scoble and Shell Israel. And it's about the early days of blogging, the evolution of blogging, and the power of blogging. Um, What's inspiring to me is that what we're doing with this new medium of these recorded Google Hangouts um, and creating a teleological taxonomy for transforming the world, um, it is like multiple, dimen multiple uh, dimensional enhancements. And I refer you to uh, beyondmastering.com, one of Steve Turnage's websites, uh, for more on dimensional enhancements. But, multiple dimensional enhancements on top of this very powerful platform called blogging, right? Everybody reads blogs. A lot of you who are watching write blogs, participate in blogs. And um, so one dimensional enhancement is that it's video. And, uh, but that alone is not enough because um, there are, you know, there are video blogs and they've existed for many years. And, and some are quite powerful, of course. But this goes beyond uh, video blogging. This is um, co-created conversations, group, community, video blogging, video conferencing. And that's a very different thing. And, you know, have, well, have people done that before? Yes, people have done that before, but not in the context of the next gigantic dimensional enhancement, it's, which is rather than focusing on one specific topic, which is what pretty much every blog does, or perhaps a variety of topics, but then that in itself defines a larger category of topics. I mean, just think in terms of, of any taxonomy, uh, and I refer back to the previous video, A World That Works. Um, that is a massive dimensional enhancement because we're essentially talking about all topics because all suddenly when we're talking about saving our, our planet from uh, the death spiral that it's currently on. Uh, we, everything is relevant because what we're, what we're starting to realize is that everything we do impacts everyone else in one way or another and in fact in multiple ways. So um, it is the ultimate dimensional enhancement <laughs> in terms of topics because you know even such esoteric topics as the metaphysics of dimensional enhancement are suddenly relevant because we need big dimensional and dimensional enhancements to uh, save our ship, our planet from from the death spiral. And I, I'm sorry for being so dramatic about it, but uh, or maybe I'm not because I mean, let's call it what it is: the planet's in a death spiral. We're adding a billion people, a billion more people are are joining our ranks. I mean, Europe freaks out about a couple hundred thousand people, you know, going from, you know, Syria and surrounding countries to Europe. A couple hundred thousand? That's chump change. We're adding a billion people to our planet every 12 to 15 years. I, I heard the other day the last billion were added in 12 years. That's just kind of mind boggling. I don't I question that statistic. I'm afraid of that statistic. I can remember 12 years ago like it was yesterday. Boom, there's a billion more people here on planet Earth. I mean, reality check, hello. Yes, the planet's in a death spiral. We just can't support that many people um, in, in a way that's at all sustainable. And the thing is, people keep having more people. <laughs> people keep breeding more people. And um, it's... Uh, well, I just refer back to the big picture part one for, you know, just some thoughts about the extent of the devastation of our planet. Early in the video, I touch on that. But anyway, um, so it's a dimensional enhancement in terms of topics. It's a dimensional enhancement in terms of recorded video conferences. It's a dimensional enhancement in terms of the impromptu nature of the recorded video conferences. I mean, I just came back from a job, and I very intentionally chose to do this without even taking a shower, changing, anything like that, uh, for a number of reasons. One is to continually remind myself that this is just practice, that everything's just practice. That's a great piece of wisdom I learned from David Fogel uh, of Natural Selection Incorporated. 
uh, years ago uh, when we were working together and I was, you know, <laughs> I was going to be going down to Mexico to be making presentations to some major uh, Mexican corporations. Uh, this was back in like 96, 97. Um, yeah, 96. Anyway, so I was getting all nervous about how I was going to go do that. And, um, and David said, just remember that every presentation you make is just practice. And he told me examples about how he and his dad, the late uh, Dr. Lawrence Fogel, would play piano um, in nightclubs. And, and, you know, he could get nervous about it, but he said, you know what? I just think of it as practice. And I just go there and practice. And it was amazing. <laughs> anyway, um, so remind myself that this is just practice. See, that's a dimensional enhancement for me because now I can just talk, right? I don't have to worry about having a presentation. I mean, the last video, <laughs> I just felt like it was all, uh, it was all nervous to that. Uh, just trying to survive it and get through it somehow. Um, but anyway, uh, let me let me jump in with some of the slides that I want to talk about. And what I'm going to do now is just kind of go from hop from presentation to presentation and I'll type stuff as I go. And I mean, this is literally just hanging out. That's kind of the beauty of this. And if uh, one of my partners joins us, then all the better. Um, some colleagues of mine and I uh, from the United States are uh, going to be in Japan starting on Friday. Um, we fly over, a couple of us fly over on Friday. But anyway, and so we're all going to be together and um, we're going to be talking about all this stuff. We, and that's <laughs> that's largely my direct audience, but I'm also considering um, you know, why not have an indirect audience as well, uh, which would be, um, you know, the general public. Why not? And let's talk about it. I mean, let's not, you know, I'll just keep this private until, you know, if we all agree, boom, we take it public. If not, then we don't. All right. So let me just kind of whisk through There's There's some stuff I want to kind of review that I was all choked up about the last time. Um, so we start with the teleological taxonomy. <laughs> and my mom asked to keep this piece of paper. And uh, I hope you're watching mom, because she and I work, I was working on this with mom, and like I'm explaining stuff to her and drawing these arrows, and then it's like, wait a second, that's a teleological taxonomy. So thank you, mom. Um, and then put it into PowerPoint, and here we are. A teleological taxonomy. It's just like, whoa, it's so cool. Uh, and it's not the one and only one, but here's the cool thing. Now, I'm going to refer back to, in fact, I'm just going to jump back there right now just to give you the visual. Um, so the visual is we've got these two parallel worlds. I don't know which of these slides I want to use to show it, but this is from the big picture part two. And you've got the human side on the left and the, the machine side on the right. And so you have this partnership between people and machines. And actually at this moment, I'm gonna go back to video because I wanna show you on the poster where that people-machine conversation fits in. And that is precisely within the context of this new partnership we're creating between people, nature, and machines. And that's the essence of radish. So more on this big picture in a bit, but I just want to be really clear that the partnership between people and machines that we're about to talk about, that I'm about to review, and then take us back to the teleological taxonomy, um, that's part of an even bigger picture. Okay, so back to, bum, bum, bum. back to, uh, let's see here. The PowerPoint. Sorry for all the. Oh, sorry for all. <laughs> sorry for all the whiplash, everybody. Anyway, um, okay. So we have a partnership between people and machines, where on the left side it's it's people having conversations. Now this can happen within any given topic within the uh, teleological taxonomy, or I might just start referring to it as. Wixonomy, because really that is that that one teleological taxonomy is a subset 
of many that will be developed within a larger Wixonomy. So let's just refer to Wixonomy as, you know, the, the best analogy is kind of like the whole of Wikipedia. What, what Wikipedia is to things, Wixonomy is to the organization and categorization and relationships between things um, and of things. So uh, anyway, so Wixonomy is, is the big universe of it. So, um, and I'll just use that universally. Wherever you see taxonomy now in the slides, think Wixonomy. Wherever you see teleological taxonomy, think Wixonomy. Now, sometimes we'll, we'll, we'll focus on the teleological aspect, which is fascinating and crucial, um, but generally we'll speak of Wixonomies. So imagine for the entire Wixonomy, which is represented here in the middle, um, imagine that entire Wixonomy A copy of it exists over here within global conversations, and another copy exists over here within global holistic modeling. And so that for whatever topic anywhere in the Wixonomy, people can be having conversations about it while, while in parallel, uh, engineers and computer scientists and pure scientists can be doing global can be doing specific modeling on that topic, whether it's global warming or population models or models that uh, look into the relationship between say nutrition, education, and overall, you know, health and happiness and prosperity of an individual, of a community, et cetera, et cetera. And so we've got all kinds of models uh, quantitative models, and that's a, and, and the point being that they share the same taxonomy. In other words, there's like a parallel universe between the conversation side that people are having and the modeling side that's, you know, that people orchestrate, but it's ultimately machines talking with each other and then ultimately spitting out an answer that the people have at the very beginning specified, give me the answer in this form. So really people are in control of machines in this scenario, but we do leverage the full power of machines. And in fact, I think there's a slide here later on that, that better shows that. Um, well, let's see, here's kind of a big picture of the dialectic. It's like a dialogue between those two universes. Um, but there's a better one still. Yeah, right, right here. It's, see how that spreads across both, but really it's, you know, in this picture, it looks like half of the Wixonomy is on the left and another smaller portion is on the right, the one that looks like a person. <laughs> but um, no, it's the same Wixonomy. That it's like a dimension that spans both worlds, the human and the machine. And um, so the dimension is the Wixonomy, the, or that layer is the Wixonomy, or that multidimensional, you know, dimensional enhancement is the Wixonomy. So uh, back to the PowerPoint here, and this Wixonomy, which is a teleological taxonomy, where the the ultimate goal is a world that works. Imagine this spanning both spaces, people and machine. So you have people talking about each of these topics, people talking about climate change, right? And whether they're saying something as simple as, it doesn't exist, or if it does exist, it's not caused by people, right? And it just out of pure dogma, or, you know, they can be, con they can be um, conversations about, hey, you know, is anyone studying the correlation between, um, you know, whatever, 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 and climate change? You know, conversations about making stuff measurable, like let's actually get some information here and analyze it rather than just, you know, have dogma drive the conversation. And um, so conversations about climate change, but then in a parallel universe, there's actual modeling going on. And let me just bring up the pictures that I have about modeling. So um, on, atop the whole world operating system, you can have a plurality of global climate models. That's what I mean by modeling, like, you know, uh, and different groups create new global climate models. I won't say all the time because there's maybe only a dozen or so, you know, serious global climate models in operation in the world today. Um, but uh, people can create new global climate models if they want to. So you don't have to rely on somebody else's model. Let there be a plurality of models. And likewise for models for, hydro, for hydrologic systems, the oil and gas industry, 
steel industry or, or giant mega models of the entire global economy, um, which in turn can be made up of the smaller sub-models like I've been talking about. So anyway, that's the world of modeling. And, um, or a, a brief uh, mention of it anyway. And so now you can imagine in parallel, you've got conversations and models happening for each of these topics. I mean, how cool is that? Um, and anyway, so that's a major dimensional enhancement. Let me go back to pure video mode here. Um, so, Dimensional enhancement in terms of topics, dimensional enhancement in terms of spanning the world of people and machines, dimensionally enhanced in terms of the richness of the medium, uh, the spontaneity of the medium, because this is about, you know, brainstorming and getting stuff out while it's hot and bouncing it off of each other and making it grow. That's where the magic happens. And um, I mean, again, getting back to, I intentionally did this without even showering after my jog so I could really practice and get in, and embrace the spirit of that and get away from um, looking good. And in fact, let me just type up some ideas that I have on, um, I just wanna use PowerPoint just, just because uh, it'll be easier. It's, it's, like, it's kind of like having a chalkboard. So, um, insert new slide, I'm gonna call it musings. So we have, um, in the bifurcated world that we're about to bring to the forefront uh, through a bifurcated economy through Triple C, in that bifurcated world, imagine that we have two sides, okay? So there's side one, uh, which is, you know, basically the side of separation. And the two main uh, pillars of separation are ego and uh, let's just say money. Money as, as a form of currency or money as a proxy for it's related to greed. So basically ego and greed. Ego and greed are the two kind of twin uh, horsemen of death <laughs> in the world of separation. And side two, uh, we have unity, and that's characterized by compassion um, and uh, empathy, um, sharing, anyway, all, all the good stuff, basically. Uh, and let me just format this a little. No. See, there again, I wanted to format it. It's like I'm, I'm worried about looking good. So every time I catch myself saying, oh, you know, and, and really diminishing what I'm, I'm doing because of my ego. I'm just going to catch myself and just, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just want to share at that level as well. Um, so of the two sides, um, they're just like two totally different worlds, the world of unity and the world of separation. And so much of our culture today promotes the separation. It's kind of like we're born into this world of separation. In fact, I'm just going to go ahead and play that super cool video. Um, let's see. This is so funny. Okay, here we go. Keep going. Yeah. Who's responsible for this? If something goes wrong, you find a scapegoat. It's what you do. What'd you say? Uh -oh. Kelly. You want to save fifteen percent or more on car insurance? You switch to Geico. It's what you do. Rick, don't walk away from me. All right. What do you think of that? So, um, in this. The, the, that's like the it's what you do is or it's what we do. That's just what we do. I mean, we're born into this world where, hey, you need to focus on making money. Right? No, not as the sole thing that you do. But I mean, at the end of the day, um, 
the grades you get in school, which of course are seen as good leading indicators of how much money you're going to make and, you know, and all that. I mean, it's like, it's so much is, is driven towards fitting into the system and becoming, you know, good slaves of the system. I don't care if you're a billionaire, you're, you're a slave of the system of greed. Um, and you're just, you know, a much, in a much deeper level of addiction than someone who's a mere multimillionaire or a mil, mere multi hundred thousandaire. Um, or someone who's in debt. It, we're all slaves to the system to the extent that we buy into it. So um, we have these two uh, worlds. And so let's look at the teleological taxonomy. I wanna, I wanna grab uh, an image and just kind of whiteboard a little bit here with it. So, where, 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 where is that nice image? No, maybe it's on the other presentation. You see, and I was starting to make myself feel badly for taking time to muse and look, right? But you know what? It's like this way we get to be together like we're really being together, you know, not like I'm, you know, just focused on looking good and therefore give you one tenth the content that it would have otherwise given you. Here's what I'm looking for. I want, I want that dollar sign. In fact, let me just copy the whole slide. Copy. And I'll just paste it at the end here. Okay. Um, and then I want to grab the Wixonomy. Let me get that. Oh, nice. Okay. All right. Um, and then I'm going to do something here. Let's take this, move it down. Okay. All right. And we'll make the point that this taxonomy, you know, what we determine to be a world that works, we can have this taxonomy driven by separation, which I'll symbolize with the dollar sign, or with unity, which I'll symbolize with triple C, okay? Where do you want to go? Do you want to go in this direction? I'll just put a little arrow up here to symbolize world that works. Oh. Dollar signs. We want a world that produces lots of dollar signs. Well, okay. Um, and, you know, or let me, you know, or, or okay, just imagine, or another arrow going to triple C. You know, what do we mean by that? Well, let's go to the definition of triple C in the original part one presentation of the big picture. Triple C, triple C. Good old Rick. Okay, here we go. Creating a new standard for the global economy. What are the three pillars? Look at the bottom. All profits to eradicating hunger, socially transformational, and environmentally transformational. Now, as to the first bullet, all profits to eradicating hunger, that is just provisional. That is all profits go to that one objective until we've actually eradicated hunger from the planet. And then we broaden it out, we expand on it. And um, let me see if I can get to that expansion here. Oh no, I'd have to get to the whole bifurcation thing. Let's skim through the whole bifurcation thing which is crucial, and okay. Yeah, so this uh, indicates where the growth is going. Once we eradicate hunger, the next objective or set of objectives are around eradicating poverty. And by that we mean the impoverishment of people. And the third one is eradicating the impoverishment of the planet, reversing climate change and actually healing our planet. So um, that is the telos, that is the direction that is suggested if we take the path to the right. 
towards triple C. The path that we've been on is the path of separation symbolized, symbolized by this dollar sign, where we're following along with uh, just doing what everyone else is doing and doing what everyone else is constantly teaching us and reinforcing us to do, which is to make money, make money, make money. Well, in an extreme, can you imagine a completely denuded world, no forests, no thriving ecosystems, runaway climate change, rising sea levels, Mad Max type of existence where finally the human population is declining through violence and starvation. Um, but we've maximized uh, economic output. We've maximized <laughs> currency in people's bank accounts, right? Well, what's that currency worth? Ask Germany at the end of World War I. People were carrying around wheelbarrows full of cash to buy groceries. The currency had so greatly devalued. So yes, we can generate a bunch of currency, but if we've got a world that's utterly destroyed and burnt to a crisp and getting hotter, just a, a heating ember, um, you know, that's kind of the, the, um, the, what do the landmark people call it? The, um, not the most likely outcome, but the probable um, most likely, something like that outcome. On the other hand, we can turn the ship around, as is artistically expressed in this slide. We can peel away from this death spiral and point ourselves on a path towards utopia. Well, how are we going to do that? Well, I'm just going to go to a purer form of the teleological taxonomy. By plugging in, by all of us plugging in to the Wixonomy, uh, having a common aim, which in, uh, initially we do through uh, the common aim of eradicating hunger, because that's the one thing that everyone can agree upon, is that we should eradicate hunger. I mean, just, it's pretty simple, right? Not everyone agrees in Project Polymath, because very few people can really, really wrap their head around what polymath is, um, but that doesn't make it not worth doing. It's just that you've only got a few people who are a few dozen or a few thousand or whatever, or maybe it's tens of thousands at this point, mathematicians around the world plugged into polymath or at least watching. So, um, but hunger is something that everyone agrees. That's important that we end hunger. Everyone but a few like really, I don't know, I don't know what kind of people would, would not want to end hunger. So we forge unity through that. Um, and we have an ever enriching, ever expanding um, uh, space of what we're gonna do with uh, the surplus energy that we're redirecting from uh, the economy of hoarding to the economy of sharing through triple C, through bifurcation of the economy. Um, and as you go down here on the left, that's the ever expanding envelope of it. Start with hunger, then eradicate poverty, which is crucial to halting this runaway population growth that we have. And then the big holy grail is reversing climate change and healing our planet and having a sustainable world with zero population growth, zero net population growth. And uh, how do we achieve that? That's part of what we need to figure out, but a big, 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 big part of it um, is expressed in this one slide up here. Uh, right here. Poverty is the engine of overpopulation. Plain and simple. Look at the statistics. Wherever you have poverty, that's where you have the biggest population growth, particularly in the realm of um, rural subsistence farming. It's just this massive engine of population growth. So here's our big picture strategy with the compassionate economy. Fill up the bathtub a bit in terms of prosperity, sustainable prosperity, not everyone driving a little Toyota and spewing you know, tons of carbon into the atmosphere, no sustainable prosperity where everyone has enough to eat, everyone has uh, a great education or access to it, and, um, and everyone has their human rights uh, respected. 
people can then have a stake in this world other you know expressed at a much higher level than just having kids because that's what you do right i'm gonna play again though that's what you do video because it's so relevant Who's responsible for this? If something goes wrong, you find a scapegoat. It's what you do. What'd you say? Uh -oh. You want to save fifteen percent or more on car insurance? You switch to Geico. It's what you do. Rick, don't walk away from me. It's what you do. It's what we do. We're born into a world where what we do is have kids. And the poorer we are, the more of them we have. And there's a lot of reasons for that. And so as long as we're living in a world like this, with this kind of income distribution, showed in the light green here at the bottom, where most of the world lives on next to nothing, then we're hosed because that is gonna keep on producing more and more people. That system is gonna keep producing more and more population growth. We need a world where there is prosperity for all, a basic level of prosperity for all. So with that as the objective, you can imagine we have these two different possible telos or two different possible aims for the global economy. One being separation, right? Basically runaway continuation of our current path, right? And the other being towards a compassionate world where the first main lever is the compassionate economy itself. There will be many other levers. Um, that's the, that's the that's the choice that we're effectively offering uh, to humanity. In fact, why not let there be then two parallel tracks of conversation? One for those who are promoting uh, the current, you know, paradigm of of the economy, the economy of hoarding, uh, and another one for any, promoting an economy of sharing. Because we'll have. Uh, let me go back to the presentation here. Let's see here. We will have this choice and people can choose. Look, I wanna argue for, what do we need to do to transform the world to generate more money, right? Go to the, the dollar sign on the left, the world of separation versus a completely separate conversation is what do we need to do to maximize uh, the objectives of triple C, sustainability and compassion for all of humanity and the planet and all ecosystems. Those are gonna be two totally different strategies. We've already seen the effects of decades, centuries of moving towards separation. What happens if we move towards unity? In fact, I better just write these words up here. So this dollar sign represents separation. And certified compassion represents unity. Okay. Peace, love, and unity, as my brother Takuya san would say. And now we all say, so say us all. Okay, so we have the world of separation and the world of unity. And so you can imagine two different communities forming, one to advocate towards more separation, more that, another to advocate for more unity. And, and then in addition to the conversations, we can have the models. We have the models. We have the climate models. We have the population models. We have the models that link uh, food security to so many different aspects of well-being which impact population. I mean, with researchers such as uh, that professor at MIT, Esther uh, Duflo, if I'm, Duflo, if I'm not um, mistaking here, let me just pull, pull it up so I can 
at least do her the justice of. Oh, it looks like she did a TED talk. I haven't seen that. Anyway, but there's this awesome book that she and another uh, professor at MIT wrote publications. What is it? Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, shit. Poor Economics. That's it. The book Poor Economics. Great book. Um, it, this, this book summarizes and gives a wonderful sort of overview of the various different economic models and techniques for measuring, making measurable uh, the impacts of um, humanitarian projects. And so we've got models for all this stuff. We can apply those models on the, you know, quote unquote, half of the equation represented by machines. So the models happen on the side of the machines, referring back to um, the, the basic introduction uh, video part one. And that the, um, so on the machine side, we're doing this modeling. On the human side, we're doing conversations about all this stuff. And so back to the, the universe of which there are those two parallels. So there's two different twos here. One is separation versus unity. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the two parallel universes of modeling versus people. People versus machines. Machines doing implementing models, which were ultimately designed by people. Um, and modeling stuff with real data. And then on the other universe, the people universe, you have people talking with other people about these very topics. And that's where it gets really exciting because that's where a dialectic can begin, uh, represented by these two blue arrows in the middle, a dialectic between the world of people and the world of machines or the world of models and the simulations these models are doing and what's coming out of them and you know all that good stuff. So, um, I mean, how exciting is that? We get to actually create and ultimately roll up all the submodels, and you have a model of the whole world. And you can use that model, you can drive that model with an objective of maximizing this stuff called currency or hard currency, or I don't even know what to call it, money, uh, versus maximizing compassion, compassion for people in the planet including compassion for future generations. Let's have a sustainable planet. I mean, basically doing the right thing. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it seems so obvious when you look at it in this bifurcated way. But I mean, is there another way of looking at it? There are probably lots of different ways of looking at it. So we should just have like, you know, whole sections uh, of the Wixonomy to explore these metaphysical concepts and what better moment than now to once again mention beyond mastering this amazing website put together by Steve Turnage, um, where you can explore many, many of these topics. Uh, division of attention, form and substance, gravity wells, lucid dreaming, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, multidimensional thinking. <laughs> I mean, this is so cool. Uh, so anyway, I, I invite everyone to check out this amazing website. Um, but basically, we're going to be using, and we're going to be using the same interface, the same software, the brain software, for uh, modeling our initial uh, Wixonomy. And actually, just pointing to Steve's taxonomy over here on Beyond Mastering, just pointing to it, we essentially incorporate it into, into the Wixonomy. Uh, just like Wikipedia points to all these external links, such as the one I just pulled up on Poor Economics, pooreconomics.com. Um, and so with all of these models and, and these tools for expanding the Wixonomy, uh, we can take any one of these topics and, you know, blow it up into its subtopics. So for example, you know, the economy where we've got economic transformation, I kind of show that visually up here. It ends, it ends up in a kind of a busy slide, but at least it makes the point. So it's like, here's, you know, here's the Wixonomy. 
uh, the teleological taxonomy, where we just have it at this high level. But then it's like, well, what about the economy? What are the details? Well, think of it like a bill of materials explosion, a bomb explosion, BOM, bill of materials. If you blow it up into its detail, it's like breaking out the magnifying glass. And that's part of the reason I put it in this other form of a radish as opposed to a bunch of you know, topics with arrows pointing to them. Uh, you can imagine we have the capability to root down Take any one of those radishes like the economy, boom, root down, get to the roots, get to the, the important topics and subtopics and sub-subtopics. Um, and then if you can synthesize all that in a concise way, which is precisely what we seek to do with Triple C, is create this new standard that is just like the synthesis of all of our knowledge about what will work precisely to maximize the universe in which we pursue as a telos, compassion, Triple C. Unity, go towards unity, the path is triple C. In fact, let me add the arrows uh, on this. If we, so a world that works that pursuit, that takes the path of triple C will result in a world of unity, of maximum unity, <laughs> to put it in engineer speak. <laughs> Maximize unity, it sounds so dorky. But anyway, um, so this is kind of what I'm advocating for. Let's create the triple C standard in such a way that it maximizes unity, right? And then that gives us our true north, which kind of magnetizes the entire wixonomy in that direction. So when we're having conversations about climate change, rather than being conversations about climate change uh, denial of climate change so that we can get more money from, you know, whoever might want to pay us money to deny climate change, right? We can have conversations about how do we actually reverse climate change and heal the planet, stabilize the climate so we can heal the planet and stop this hemorrhaging of species. We, we're losing so many species to extinction among many other forms of damage. Um, so, you know, in which direction do we magnetize the wixonomy? What are we trying to optimize for? Unity or separation? Or something in between, right? Something in between. Here's what I think about something in between, right? Um, let's see, swirl, ice cream cone, right? See, this is what I'm talking about. Would you want to have a swirl cone, which is half vanilla and half shit? Right? Why? If you, you know, and in, in a bifurcated world, you know, is that an oversimplification or is there a space for, you know, hoarding of, of some wealth? You know, I don't know, maybe hoard until you, you know, cap out at $10 million. I mean, does anyone really need more than $10 million? I mean, come on, a billionaire would be shocked because their ego is so connected to a billion that they think of, you know, people with only 10 million as poor, right? Seriously. Um, and so, it's so it's a it's a manufactured need, but that's coming from the world of separation, where my ego is the most important thing, right? And um, or it's so important that I'm just not willing to sacrifice ego, you know, my ego of being a billionaire, um, in favor of you know helping out others, right? So it's you know so. Really, I don't know. So I don't know if I'm being too harsh when I talk about a hybrid world as being, you know, a mix of vanilla and shit. But, um, you know, maybe it is. Let's explore that. And, you know, so that's yet another topic that we can explore within a taxonomy that looks, or will soon look, something like this, where you can just, you know, click around. And isn't it just so cool? It's like you click on a topic and it kind of hovers there for a moment. and then. <laughs> you know, rearranges the whole wixonomy. See, so, and really, this is kind of a cool way of, ex of expressing what I think of as a wixonomy or how it would look visually, is it's just all multidimensional and any topic can be connected to any other, uh, any other topic. It doesn't have to look like, you know, the roots of a, of a radish um, that are just branching out in one way but not reconnecting in other places. And, and all that so it's 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 just a really rich visual for all that so um man i could just go on and on uh one thing i do want to do is mention um and i'll i'll send a note to uh 
to Terry um, to uh, ask him about uh, sharing about some of his experiences in polymath and how this could be mapped to uh, the, you know, the plurality of models that we're going to be creating in this context of the whole world operating system, the whole world simulators, et cetera, as I talk about in Big Picture Part 1, um, or sorry, Part 2. Uh, and also, you know, the even bigger picture of beyond modeling, the actual uh, building out of this taxonomy, the teleological taxonomy, towards a world with very well-defined goals in terms of unity and in terms of sustainability, compassion, uh, all, the, all the, the core pillars of Triple C. So um, without too much more whiplash, uh, let me just meditate on this for a moment um, and think. So this is a good point to delve into a little bit. Um, so you see how with this at the bottom here where I have academia and mathematics, that's just one branch. Really, there are multiple branches coming out of economic transformation. I mean, every sector of the economy. Let me just add a couple here just for just to kind of show what I'm talking about. So another sector of the economy is, um, well, actually, at this, this is interesting. Uh, uh, so we've got academia, another sector would be just like the private sector, you know, the entire private sector of the economy for the private super sector, because then underneath the private sector, you have such sectors as, you know, manufacturing and Anyway, I don't want to slow us down too much. I just want to at least get some of the stuff on the whiteboard so it's not just all words hanging in the air. I hope you can all see that. Manufacturing is what I'm typing below. Anyway, it's a whole, you know, well, actually, it's a whole sort of bomb, ex bill of materials explosion on the economy, but I do want to differentiate between the economy that I show in this explosion, which is just sectors like manufacturing, um, versus the view that I'm presenting down here, which is starting with, you know, the private sector that then branches out into manufacturing, agriculture, services, mining, all, all different, you know, what I think of as traditional sectors of the economy. Uh, so anyway, you've got private sector. At this level, you've got the whole private sector representing all of that. You've got academia, you've got government, you've got nonprofit, you've got religion, you know, basically the, the main sort of pillars of society, not just you know, the economy like we normally think of the economy, but all aspects of human activity. Um, so instead of maybe, instead of economic transformation, maybe it's human activity <laughs> transformation. But you see, that's just, I don't know, that just feels too wonky. So I'm going to leave it at economic transformation, but know that we're talking about really, truly all, all aspects of human activity, which is what economics really should be studying. In fact, I point everyone to the great book, Bionomics by Michael Rothschild. And in fact, Michael's another really great guy who I want to connect with and do a hangout with on all these topics. In fact, that's kind of where I was going with Terry Tao is I really want to do a hangout with you, Terry, and I'll send you this video. As long as my partners are all cool with it, I'll, I'll send this to you and uh, with a link right to this moment where I mentioned Professor Terry Tao of UCLA. In fact, what a great way to kind of uh, get someone's attention. Uh, and, and we need to do that because we're, we're at a point the, the, the world is in such a death spiral that whereas maybe like 10 years ago, I, I would have been a lot more hesitant to just reach out and say, hey, Terry, I need you to, you know, I need your help here. Because, um, you know, and I, 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 would, I would be hesitant to do it in such a public way, right? I would somehow think, oh, that's not good form, right? Or I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look bad. He might not like that. But you see, that is for me is just more coming from the world of separation. Um, and where did I put that slide? Oh, somewhere up here. I don't know. Uh, I'll find it. Oh, I know. I'll use search. Separation. Here we go. Okay. So separation, ego and greed, right? It's my it's my ego ultimately that would keep me from mentioning Terry and saying, "Hey, I got to talk with Terry, right, in this public way," because I haven't spoken with Terry in 
<laughs> I actually only spoke with him once, and it was in a very in, informal way. Um, so you may not even remember me. So, um, but yeah, that's the that's kind of the big. So, so I mentioned Terry. Um, I've mentioned a couple other people uh, who I want to reach out to. One is Esther Esther uh, Deflo of MIT, um, and her her colleague with whom she co-authored Par Economics, which is another MIT professor, uh, Banerjee, Professor Banerjee. Um, so. In fact, the three of us could do like a three-way hangout. Whatever. I'm. I'm just. We, we, let's let's start talking about this stuff because a lot of people are going to be asking questions about precisely the nuts and bolts of this. Hey, you're saying you know divert, create this whole compassionate sector of the economy and generate you know hundreds of billions of dollars. What are you going to spend it on? And how do you know you're not going to do more harm than good? You know, blah 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 blah. Well, you know that's where we need the expertise of people like. Esther Duffalo and Professor Banerjee, um, we need you now. We need you to, to weigh in on, uh, you know, this, the, like if you had an infinite budget, which is essentially what we're proposing to offer the world through uh, the bifurcation of the global economy into a compassionate economy and an economy affording, we're, we're offering the world an infinite budget with the, the, the extent to which that success, that's successful will provide a gargantuan budget as as we talk about in big picture part one I mean like the equivalent of 150 billion Melinda Gates foundations once we've penetrated even 10% of the global economy so if we have infinite budget what do we do with the money that's where I need you all you you experts in poor economics essentially that we can actually you know help people and what are the what are the ways what are the ways where we know if we make these investments we're gonna do nothing but good where are other ways where where there are risks and we need to know what those risks are um, and so for example that'll help us in making critical decisions about relief programs um, I mean sometimes people complain about relief programs because oh it disrupts local food economics well I mean how silly is that if you simply you know consider that we can take that food budget for eradicating hunger in that particular part of the world and we can put together a very sensible plan for deploying funds in buying food from that local region to help support, bolster the local food economy rather than disrupt it, heaven forbid, harm it, right? Bolster it, support it, invest in it, right? And then only to the extent that purchasing say like say you bought up all the food in the local market well that could cause hunger in other ways because now there's no no food for the other people who who normally would have bought it with their money right so you know we have to be very sensitive to those kinds of things but we've got so much capacity to measure and analyze these days let's use it and that's of course the whole side of the world of machines side of the um you know as we talk about here People, machines. We need, we need both. That's the big picture point. So, experts of the world, we need you. Terry Tao, Esther Dufflo, Professor Banerjee, and a whole bunch of other folks who we can reach out to. And what's wrong with just you know reaching out to people in this way, right? We mentioned the people who we need to talk with. We're just transparent about it. We need to talk, right? Let's do it. Uh, and we're transparent about what there is to talk about, and that's why we're doing all these all these videos and hangouts and presentations is to, is to maximize that transparency um, and points of view, um, perspective as we talk about in uh, Big Picture Part One, uh, and you know, getting back to Nathan Merbold's uh, famous quote: "Perspective adds thirty IQ points." That's within the context of one brain blow it up to a higher form of intelligence where you have all these connected brains. Brains, it's really people. It's brains, hearts, souls, minds, spirits, the whole, the whole thing. Um, get these people connected, like with the battery analogy, get them connected in series and boom, we increase the voltage, we increase the power, add perfect memory, add the spontaneity of this, right? Add the, the, the reduced friction and being able to just reach out to folks and say, hey, we need you to weigh in on this, please. It's important.
right? And if you don't believe in the Radish platform, if you think of this, oh, no, that's a flawed platform, there's a better platform, just mention that. Just tell us where you do hang out so we can find you there, right? <laughs> um, assuming you hang out somewhere and are willing to engage with the world and share what you know, because you know things that are very, very specific and very, very important to the survival of our planet. And right now, we simply need everyone to be very, very generous with what you know. Plug into Radish. Uh, if, it, if your topic is not, does not yet exist on the Wixonomy, we'll have a mechanism for creating it, right? And that'll be part of the social network. Um, we can do that, right? Anyway, I'll, I'll let the social network experts weigh in on that. <laughs> um, but it's really a mashup between Wixonomy and social network so that people can then plug in with their identity, with their security, with whatever they need, and also have a pointer to who they are, right? So kind of one way to think about this whole paradigm, um, at least on the side of the, the, the parallel universe of people talking about all these topics within the Wixonomy, is um, it's kind of like an infinite campfire, right? Think of the world, not to use burning is, is you know, ah, you know, so careful with that one, of course. But, um, but the campfire analogy of, hey, let's come together and share where everyone can see everyone else. It's like nothing's hidden and the light's right in the center and it's shining on all of us. You know, why not, you know, say, hey, Terry, you know, publicly, right? Is that bad form? The, wor the planet is on fire. We're destroying our home. We're increasing our world population at an extremely unsustainable rate. We're in a state of emergency here. So let's act like that and let's stop being separate from other people and afraid to mention them by name. So let's mention whoever we need to mention by name and invite them into the conversation. And with that, I got a roll. Um, can't wait to see you all in Japan at the end of this week uh, when we arrive. Actually, I guess we'll be arriving Saturday night, Japan time. Yeah, um, we fly out Friday evening. Anyway, so psyched to see you all. Um, Takuya-san, my brother, and family and company. Arigato, arigato. To be continued. <laughs> <laughs>